Good evening. My name is Detective Hercule Poirot, and today I will be solving the mystery of why a haunting in Venice has a 74% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics and a 71% from audience scores. Because me, I think I saw a completely different movie than everyone else. I did not enjoy it as everyone else did. I hope everyone's enjoying my Hercule Poirot accent. Other than that, let's get to solving this mystery, ladies and gentlemen. This is a haunting in Venice. Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, this is my review for A Haunting in Venice starring Kenneth Branagh, Jamie Dornan, Tina Fey, Michelle Yeoh, and was directed by Kenneth Branagh himself, and our story follows Hercule Poirot on another wicked, dastardly, crazy mystery where he's brought in to basically witness this seance of a family who's lost a family member, they're trying to, you know... They're bringing in a seance person so they can obviously reach her from the grave. And Hercule Poirot is there to not only prove that ghosts don't exist, but whatever deaths are happening in the home now are not ghost related, but to they're related to somebody's vendetta against just whatever situation is going on. And he's there to prove that ghosts don't exist and that murders are still as real as day. And basically, that's the best way I can describe this premise. So without further ado, let's just get into what I liked and what I didn't like about the movie. But before I do that, the reason that I bring up the Rotten Tomatoes scores in my intro is just because I'm kind of shocked that this movie's getting this kind of uh, buzz or not even buzz, just these amounts of good reviews and people actually liking it because... I, I Like I said, I personally did not feel the exact same. There are very good moments in this movie, which I will get to for sure, but I just... It happened to me with Death on the Nile, too, so this is really coming out of a place of more curiosity than, you know, not... Like, I love the first, um, the Murder on the Orient Express. I, I, can't, I don't necessarily know what to call this trilogy now that it's a trilogy, but they're... What, these, these murder... These, I'll call them the, the, Her, the Hercule Poirot trilogy. Of the Hercule Poirot trilogy, I loved Murder on the Orient Express. I really really enjoyed that ending. I loved the ensemble cast. I thought that was the best, honestly, put together one of these films that has been put together, you know, since this trilogy has started. The last two films for me have kind of been a, a bigger miss than not. Like, there, there are some parts of the movie that hit. I did enjoy this movie a lot better than Death on the Nile, though. I thought Death on the Nile was extremely mediocre, and honestly, I was just not a fan of Gal Gadot's performance, as clearly a lot of people have expressed most recently <laughs> with posting her clips of that movie on, tw on Twitter, but, um... I did love Letitia Wright. I did like some of the other cast members in Death on the Nile, but as an overall film, it was definitely a step down from Murder on the Orient Express. This is taking a step in the right direction, just doesn't necessarily go in the complete direction that Murder on the Orient Express went, but let me just get into what I liked and what I didn't like about the movie. And then you guys, in the comments, let me know below what you did enjoy about the movie, if you did enjoy it at all. Okay, so as far as what I liked about the movie, look, one thing that I consistently enjoy in all of these movies is Kenneth Branagh's portrayal as Hercule Poirot. I think he's a very interesting character. I think he's a very good detective. I, 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 I was literally about to say I like the, his, his style and his way of approaching mysteries, but in this one, it kind of, uh, it kind of goes against that. But I'll say just in general, I do enjoy his portrayal, or not his portrayal, his approach to these mysteries and the way he wants to go about solving them. Now, is he as great as the world's greatest detective, Benoit Blanc, played by Daniel Craig? No, absolutely not. And that's a glass onion, or I'm sorry, that's a Knives Out reference for those who don't know the character of Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc is still the greatest movie detective to ever hit the screen other than Brad Pitt. I'm not necessarily sure, and Brad Pitt in Seven. I'm not necessarily sure what the, the detective name in Seven was that Brad Pitt played, but he's pretty good too. But look, nonetheless, Kenneth Branagh always steals the show in this movie or in these movies. He does a phenomenal job. It's crazy that he is, I, I'm not sure if he, did he direct the first one? Because I know he directed the last two. If he Is he responsible for all three? Yes, he is. He's responsible for all three. Okay, so... It's crazy to me how he directed these movies, and yet they have such a significant fall-off from Murder on the Orient Express. Like I said, Murder on the Orient Express had a, not only a great ensemble cast, but the mystery was very intriguing. The You were very interested in what was going on. You're interested in all the character stories, the way the characters are interacting with each other. And then on top of that, it had a very original ending. The Death on the Nile 
took a complete step down and personally it was just like I said, the ensemble cast wasn't as good. The characters damn sure weren't as interesting. And it was very predictable. That was a big problem that I had with Death on the Nile. A Murder on the Orient Express was not predictable whatsoever. This movie, A Haunting in Venice, another thing I liked about the movie. It's not predictable. Um, it. I'll say the difference is that this movie, this A Haunting in Venice versus A Murder on the Orient Express... A Haunting in Venice tries to throw you in like 17 different directions. It keeps just spinning you around and around and around. Just so honestly, at, at some point, I don't even think you're really like guessing who did it anymore. You're just confused. You're just really confused as to like who could have done this, what the hell is going on. And honestly, you just let it play out because there's no point even, even trying to wrap your head around it. And even when you feel like everything is solved and the movie's about to end, they throw another curveball in there too. So they're just trying to throw you in all different directions. And I honestly appreciate that a lot more than what they did in the last movie and just completely didn't even try to hide the mystery whatsoever. It's so obvious in Death on the Nile what the mystery is and who did it in that movie but in this one i appreciate them for trying to keep the enigma and the mystery going throughout the entirety of the film another thing i enjoyed about the movie was one of the child actors um gotta look up the kid's name because i would not know his name's jude hill first of all this is there is a 45 year old man trapped in that kid's body because that kid portrays an old soul i'm not necessarily sure how he did that so well but that kid could be that kid could portray a little old man like that he did a damn good job in this movie i really did like his performance and like i said the only other thing i liked was that the fact that this movie wasn't as predictable but as far as what i didn't like yeah there's a there's a longer list for that so let's just get into it So, as far as what I didn't like about the movie, um, I'm going to start with the fact that I didn't necessarily, like, this is going to counteract or contradict one of my points in the, in, you know, what I did like about the movie, but the way they went about solving this mystery, I know, I said I like the way that, you know, Hercule Poirot approaches these mysteries, but the way that it's done in this film is very very annoying because it's just very draw it he, so the way he does it in the film is he, he separates everyone and talks to each person individually to find out where they were what their story is what their background to the family is and what their background to the house is all this other stuff he's separating them one by one talking to everyone in groups after a while that just gets very tiresome because it's just the movie's just recreating a pattern throughout the film so basically what happens is he'll interview somebody something scary happens or something that's supposed to be scary or, or chilling or horrifying happens and then he'll interview somebody else something scary happens he'll interview somebody else something scary happens this pattern is just repeating itself throughout the entirety of the movie and it makes the movie a lot longer to me than it was supposed to be the movie just kind of feels like it's dragging out by just playing out this process Process. The scary stuff really isn't that scary. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Michelle Yeoh's character was kind of annoying to me. Listening, listening. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm referring to. But I mean, I wasn't necessarily a fan of her character. I thought that the the people in the movie itself were doing a lot better at playing like wacky or just more interest wacky interesting characters i was more interested in these characters than i was in the ensemble from death on the nile but like i said michelle yo's character kind of threw me off some of the other characters like they're interesting i just feel like they don't necessarily have a lot to do other than just be a victim like I, i'm not a victim but a suspect i feel like a lot of them don't really have much else to do that but be suspects and then we get into you know what what the depth of the story is and then the deaths start happening and the deaths are okay they're pretty cool the scary effects are okay they're not you know anything pretty crazy um another thing i personally wasn't a fan of was the lack of uh chemist the character interactions i felt like th these characters were like i said the way that they solved the mystery everyone separated so there's not a lot of character interactions you're not getting a lot of banter back and forth between people and just creating that chemistry or creating that sense of you can actually care about what's going on on screen. Personally, I didn't care. Another thing that I was very fearful of going into this movie that proved, proved to not be as bad as I thought it was, but it damn sure didn't help, the dark setting of this movie. It's so dark, and everyone's voice is just so heavy and dragging, and especially Kenneth Branagh. It's, basically, the movie makes me want to go to sleep at moments. Like It's, it's very 
like the trailer for this movie was very dark and I was I could barely see what the hell was going on in the trailer sometimes and I was afraid if that's how the movie was going to be translated then I'm I might be out on that one but it's not as dark as the trailer was but it's damn sure not that much better like I said it's a very dark setting can't really see a lot um the heavy voice everybody's heavy voice and dragging voice does not help you try to stay awake throughout this thing i was f catch catching myself nodding off a few times in this movie i don't know like i said i feel like maybe this movie just was not for me i i personally have i love whodunits i love murder mystery movies i absolutely loved murder on the orient express but these last two movies for me just did not hit the same as that first one did, and I really wanted them to. Death on the Nile was a lot worse than this one, though. I did enjoy this one a lot more than Death on the Nile. How much? Well, for all those reasons and more, guys, I'm going to give A Haunting in Venice a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Guys, so A Haunting in Venice, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Look, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and so much more, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. This is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.